In this video we will take a look at the binomial probability distribution as well as what are called binomial experiments. Binomial experiments are experiments where you perform a repeated action. Every action that you perform results in an outcome and all of those outcomes and actions must be independent from one another. So that means that the outcome of one of your actions has no effect on the probability of the outcome of another action. These actions that I'm performing are referred to as trials. In a binomial experiment, a trial must have one of two outcomes or be classified as one of two outcomes. And those are success and failure. Now that doesn't mean that the action you perform must have only two outcomes, only that it must be classified as one of two outcomes. For example, if I were to roll a six-sided die, there would be six possible outcomes to that action. However, if I was only interested in whether the outcome was an odd number or an even number, I could still classify this as a binomial experiment. What I could do is classify all of the odd number outcomes, 1, 3, and 5, as successes, and classify all the even number outcomes, 2, 4, and 6, as failures. The last requirement for a binomial experiment is that the probability of a success on any one individual trial must be the same for all your trials. I want to go through an example of a binomial experiment and how to compute the probabilities for different results. Here we have an example where John is a basketball player who makes 60% of his free throws. And the question asks us, if John attempts eight free throws under the same conditions, let's find the probability of a few different situations. Now this example would qualify as a binomial experiment. There are a fixed number of identical repeated trials, and those are him shooting his eight free throws. So the number of trials in this example would be eight. We refer to the number of trials as an n. Now each trial results in one of two outcomes. Either he makes the free throw or he doesn't. If I classify making the free throw as a success and missing it as a failure, this will also qualify as a binomial experiment. The probability of a success must be the same on every free throw. Now, what we are using in this example is we are using the relative frequency of all John's past free throws. We are told that he makes 60% of his free throws. So on any one random free throw, we have to assume that the probability he's going to make it is 60%. This is the only probability that we could calculate or we could go with. So the probability of him making a free throw on any one attempt, we will use 0.6 and we will refer to that as our p-value, which is the probability of success in any one trial. The q-value is the probability of a failure on any one particular trial. And since he makes 60% of his free throws, he must miss 40%. So we will use q equal to 0.4 for this problem. Since a binomial experiment can only have a success or a failure as an outcome, the probabilities for p and q must add up to 1. The variable in a binomial experiment is our r value, which refers to the number of successes in the n trials. This variable is a discrete variable. The values of r can vary depending on what problem you're doing, but it's really dependent on what your n value is. Here John is taking eight free throws, so we have an n value of eight. 
which means that the number of successes, or in other words, the number of free throws he can make, would be a discrete variable that would range from 0 to 8, taking on only whole numbers. The way we can compute binomial probabilities, or the purpose here, is that we want to be able to find the probability of a certain number of successes in those n trials. A good example of when we would want to use the binomial formula would be a situation where I was looking to find the probability that something happened this many times out of that many times. Here in part A, we're asked to find the probability he makes exactly four free throws. So for this problem, our R value is going to be four. We're interested in computing the probability that he, we have exactly four successes in our eight trials. Now to compute this probability, we will use the binomial formula given here in the upper left corner. This formula says that if we want to find the probability of a certain number of successes, r, it's going to equal a combination of n and r multiplied by the probability of success raised to an exponent of r, the number of successes, times the probability of failure, q, raised to an exponent of n minus r, which would be the number of failures. We have all these values set up for this problem. n is 8, p is 0.6, q is 0.4. And now we're ready to compute this probability. So the probability that we make exactly four free throws would be a combination of 8 and 4. 0.6, the probability of success, raised to the 4, times 0.4, the probability of failure, raised to the 8 minus 4, which is also 4. Doing out these calculations one by one, I use my calculator and the combination function to find that 8 combination 4 is equal to 70. 0.6 raised to the fourth would be 0.1296. And 0.4 raised to the fourth would be 0 0.0256. Multiplying those probabilities together, we would get 0 0.232 as our answer. That is the probability that John makes exactly four free throws.